for her. Matthew, Matthew, the 13th chapter. Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Won't take me long. Matthew 13, verses 1 through 9. Amplified version puts it like this. It's up on the screen. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea of Galilee. But such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there positioning himself as a teacher. While the whole crowd stood on the shore, he told them many things in parables. Somebody say in parables. Saying, listen carefully. A sower went out to sow seed in his field. And as he sowed, some seed fell beside the road between the fields and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground. And where they did not have much soil, and at once they sprang up, but because they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, that they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. Other seed, here we go, fell on good soil and yield grain. Some a hundred times as much as was sown, some 60 times as much as was sown, and some 30. And look what he says. He who has ears to hear, let him hear my words. Somebody say my words. My words. And from that, we've been talking on a series this last uh, several weeks about the kingdom in me. And from that, I want to get on the heels of that series and tag this text, tag this topic. Here comes the harvest. Look at somebody say, here comes the harvest. Here comes the harvest. Now, I can tell that some people have been praying. Some people have been anticipating because I got some amens. I got some clapping. But some of y'all, you still got your arms folded and you're wondering what I'm talking about. Well, give me about 18 minutes and I'm going to show you. Here it is, the last several weeks we've been talking about the tree, the tree in the garden, uprooting trees in the kingdom and how that tree that they saw in the garden that they partook of and through that sin, sin nature enters into the world. And that tree, metaphorically, we're talking about something that people may have said, something that you may have experienced in your life, something that caused it to get inside of you that that tree, that proverbial tree that they partook of in the garden gets on the inside of you And now you see life for yourself differently than the way God intended for you. It may be the way you brought up. It may have been something that a relative done to you. It may have been a bad relationship. It may have been filing bankruptcy. It may have been a divorce. It may have been something that obscured your sight, that got you off track. And now you're trying to find yourself. And life carries you through a valley of hills, ups and downs, ins and outs. And you can't seem to get on on track and from those series the last several weeks we've been having people pull up trees not physically but spiritually pull up trees that if there's something in your life that is preventing you from living life and having it more abundantly we want you to pull it up and people been running to the altar and they pulling it up they bouncing back from relationships we have people run around the church lose their wigs dance holes in their stockings shouting and praising God declaring a new leaf on life because they finally realized that the enemy has tricked them out of the life that God has declared for them and they're decreeing that they're drawing a line in the sand and they ain't going back to what has blown their future that they believe that they have a future and a hope in God. I wish I had twin people that are shout right there. And so we've been pulling up trees. We've been pulling them up. We've been going back in our past and we're saying that we're not going to live a defeated life. And from that I know the people are saying now pastor got us pulling up a lot of trees when are we going to start planting some stuff 
Well, I came to tell you that this Sunday is that Sunday. That what you've been looking at that looks barren in your life, we're getting ready to put some good seed down in the ground. Whatever you've been waiting on God to develop in your life, we're getting ready to sow some seeds. And just like this seed sower, we're going to be intentional about where we place it, about where we put it, about what we're expecting. We're no longer going to walk through life aimlessly saying that whatever happens, happens. No, we we know we have a future in God. We know that God has blessed us. We know who I wish I get about 12 of y'all to clap right there. We know that this is not the end of the matter. That this is the middle of the movie. And that whatever you're dealing with, God can and God will bring you out. If there's about 15 of y'all that can look back over your life, you have testimony. You have witness. You have evidence that God has not failed you. And I don't like to say he's never failed me yet because because he don't fail at all. We got a God that is more than a conqueror. Yeah. Look at somebody. Look at somebody say it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time to start planning. And Jesus here. He's sitting by the shore. And he's talking in parables. Parables is another way that Jesus can communicate. Without all the eavesdroppers understanding what he's really saying. In other words. He's talking in such a matter. Because he's done so many miracles. Sister Snotty. That people have started gathering around. Just so that they can get a miracle. They heard about the eyes being opened. They heard about the lame man walking. They heard about the lepers being healed and he started gathering people from all around but he talked in such a way that if you were just church people coming to get what you want you really ain't going to see it if you were church people just coming to look at what people got on you really ain't going to see it if you church people and you got your nose turned up at people while you sitting here praising God you ain't going to see it if you church people and you wonder why all these young folk in here with the braids in their hair and the tattoos tattoos on their neck you really ain't gonna see the kingdom but for those of us that have been saved for real those of us that have been delivered for real those of us that we've gone through hell and high water and we ain't got time to judge nobody we ain't got time to mock nobody we so glad that the church doors are open up we done ran in here forgot that we didn't even lock our car door we in here lifting up our hands giving God the praise will somebody shout glory yeah, so he talked, he talked, he talked. He, look at somebody say, he talked, he talked. He talked in parables so that the eavesdroppers wouldn't catch it. The nosy people wouldn't catch it. So that if they didn't catch it, they wouldn't follow him for long. And the people that really were seeking a change in their life, really wanted a difference, they would hold on to what he was saying and look deeper into the matter. Ah, can I help y'all out a little bit? And you're wondering why people have fallen off of your life. Maybe your language ain't their appetite. Maybe your dreams are not their appetite. Maybe because your aspirations are far beyond what they can actually see. Wonder you wonder you want to know why I'm hanging out with the brothers with the red jackets? Because I know that when we walk in the room, the room is much bigger than what you can anticipate. You got to start going to lunch with people that can make your baby leap. You got to God going to lunch to people that let you know that's on the inside of you is alive. Mary and Elizabeth spoke to one another. Both of them were pregnant with possibility. One had the Savior on the inside. The other one had John the Baptist. And when they gave salutations, Mary, baby, leap. You got to hang out with people that make your dreams leap. Yes, you can have the house. Yes, you can have the job. Yes, you can do whatever God say you can do. Look at somebody and say, I came to make your baby leap. I came to make you go after it all. I came to make sure that you don't quit on the way. And if you get down, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to dust you off. I'm going to push you on. I'm going to make sure you're happy. So he talks, sit down for me, y'all he, 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 rushing me, y'all rushing me. He, put, he, he spoke in parables, bro, Snotty. He spoke in parables so that those that can hear it can see it, even when they can't see it. Then my people hear what I just said. You got to be able to hear it and see it before you can see it. Let me talk to my young people. Let me talk to the young people in college. You got to be able to envision yourself 
walking across the stage. You have to be able to envision yourself going in with the resume in your hand. And I don't care if there's 20 people on the list. You got to interview like you're the only one they looking for. You got to envision yourself having the house. I don't care if somebody's already living in it. You got to walk around and knock on the door, ring the doorbell and tell him, be careful how you decorate because it's going to be mine after a while. You got to be big. You got to be able to see yourself coming out of your problem. I need to talk to about 12 of y'all in here. See yourself healed. See yourself delivered. See yourself more than a conqueror. See yourself a millionaire. See your children making it. See your marriage living in abundance. You got to be able to see it. I'm coming. Elder Wallace, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. And so we got to plant some seeds. And that's why I don't have time. Elder Wallace, I don't have time just to preach a feel-good message. I don't have time just to tickle your fancy. I need to be able to put something in you that'll make you charge hell with a water pistol. Let me say that one more time. I got to put something in you that if the enemy ring your doorbell, you got to be able to open up and say, I knew you were looking for me. I was looking for you too. I saw you 15 years ago when you tried to destroy my mama. I'm looking for you too. I saw you 20 years ago when you broke up my marriage. I'm looking for you too. I wish I had my father, y'all had some fight that you looking for the enemy. You got to be able to look And intentional about the seed that we plant. It ain't up on the screen, but Genesis 8.22 says, while the earth yet remains, it's always going to be seed time. <laughs> seed time and harvest. That if I go through the seed time, I can ex... Uh -uh, Y'all ain't catching that, man. I, I'm, I'm a little slow because I went to a public school, but I did graduate college that if I get the seed in the right spot, I can expect something to come up. I see the college boys nodding their head that if I get it in the right spot, I'm not just living life aimlessly, but I'm expecting something to show up. Can I help y'all out because y'all still ain't caught it? I ain't coming to church just to be coming to church. I came to church because I'm expecting God to show up in my life. I, when I woke up, I expect him to pay my bills. When I got my shoes on my feet, I expect him to let me have life Life more abundance. If I'm sick, I expect to be healed. If my body is rocking with pain, he said I was he was bruised for my iniquities. Come on, this that seed and the chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes, I'm not not that I may be healed, not that I want to be healed. Not that I can be here. I am here. And I expect y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. And if he says I'm the head and not the tail, I ain't got to worry about being broke. I expect the check to show up in my direct deposit. I expect the promotion on my job. I expect the commission because my God got money that don't even have serial numbers on it yet. My God got the healing and the cure for cancer. Seed time. Somebody say harvest. I'm expecting a harvest. I'm expecting a harvest. And he says that. And so I came today in the little few minutes I got left with you to tell you as your pastor, God says surely nothing will happen on the earth unless he first reveal it. Come on to his prophet. And I came to prophesy this morning. I came to tell you it's yours. <laughs> Yeah, don't play with me. I came to tell you it's yours. And, I, and here's what I came to tell you. They can't stop you. I wish somebody would grab that because if they could have stopped you, they would have stopped you a long time ago. That's why you need to go ahead and clap now. That's why you need to go ahead and shout now. Because you ain't going to have time to celebrate when they give it to you. Because you're going to be too busy giving him the glory. You ought to shout like you already won. You ought to shout like you already threw it. You know, I wish I had about five of y'all stand up on your feet and turn around and say, you better look at me now. Because when I get to where I'm going, you ain't going to know who I am. Will somebody shout up? Woo! Yes, sir. 
I'm clapping, I'm clapping, I'm clapping. Y'all sit down, have fun, man. So here, so here, let me, let me explain it. I got to go. Let me explain it. I got like seven minutes. Let me explain it. Here it is. Matthew is talking about the different souls. Can I give you all the cliff notes to this? And let me go ahead and shout and get y'all out of here. I got a shout in my spirit, man. I feel like running out of here. Look what it says. This is the cliff notes to the text. Is that the, Jesus is talking in parables and he's talking uh, about a farmer sowing. And he's saying, hey, look, I'm sowing. This farmer is sowing in these different types of grounds. Different types of soils. And yet each soil is responding to the seed differently. Can I pause parenthetically and say this to y'all? The soil represents the different types of hearts. Just like some of y'all stood up and clapped, it's because your heart received what was said. But if you had to pause for a moment and looked around, some folks still... Mama, some folks still had their arms folded because they were wondering what was going on because their heart had not been broken up through the praise and worship. The, the, the issues of life still had their hearts hardened that they couldn't receive the word of God. Y'all shouting, they stepped all on their shoes, they knocked their purse on the floor, clapping and dancing all around, and they sitting there going, what is all the commotion about? I really don't see why it takes all of that. I just came to get my check in the box, but for some of us that been going through hell so long our hearts have been broken up and we're ready to receive what God has and the singer already said excuse me that if my praise bothers you you ain't seen nothing yet I'm lifting my hands because I'm expecting God so I'm about ready I'm about ready I'm about ready and so he says these, 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 these different soils represents the different hearts. And here's the sweet spot of the text, Elder Wallace. The, the soil changes. Brock Conley, but the seed don't. I know y'all seen it before, all y'all Bible scholars. Y'all done been to Crusaders and Sunbeam and all that. Y'all, y'all, y'all done seen it. I, 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 let, let, me, let, let, let me talk to the west side of the church. Let me talk to y'all. I, 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 can I talk to y'all? I, I, I didn't grow up in church. I, I, I was saved for real. I, dr I drunk Remy Martin for real. I drunk Christian Brothers for real. I smoked Black and Miles for real. I ran the streets for real. So when I read that, and, and I didn't see it like everybody else saw it and grew Grew up in church and had choir rows, but can I talk to y'all for a minute that I didn't see that all the soils changed, but the seed didn't change. And I kept looking at it. All the soils, mama, they, they, they changed, but the seed didn't change. And God, I asked God, I said, God, wait a minute now. All the soils changed. He said, yes, son, that's right. All the soils did change because it talks about the different variations of different types of hearts. I said, but the seed didn't change. He he says yes it's representing the different type of people that I spoke the same word to that they just didn't get it let me help y'all out you wonder why your neighbor getting blessed you ain't received what was said you wonder why everybody look like they growing past you you ain't received what was said well I need to talk to the pastor no you don't you need to play back last week video and get what I said on last week because everybody else done got it and they're being blessed he says he said this right here, he says, these different soils, they change. But this one soil, I'm closing, the seed was cast on good earth. And this person who hears and takes in the news and then produces a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. Wait a minute. I didn't told you that all those soil had to do was receive it. Y'all still don't get it. All you got to do is receive it. The growing ain't on you. The sprouting ain't on you. How fast it comes up it ain't on you. That if you just hold on. 
Look at somebody and say, just hold on. Hold on. Change. Change. It's gone to come. Have I got a witness here? You ought to lean over and just touch shoulder to shoulder with your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been going through for a long time. I've been on this Christian journey for a long time. But I just heard this preacher say for the first time that if I hold on, I got change coming. Have I got a witness here? Is there anybody that's in here? You're going to hold on one more time. That this next turn that you're about to experience, God is going to open doors in your favor. I got about three people standing up, but I need about seven more. So I'm going to say it like this. Are you going to hang in there until God turn this thing around? I'm planting seed. I got some more hearts that stood up. Do you see what God is doing in your life? I got about five more people standing up. Hey, but here's where I'm going to get you at. Do you expect God to bring a harvest in your life? If that's you, say yes. If that's your house, say yes. Is there anybody that's in here? You've been expecting God to move. Well, I came to tell you, you're in the right place at the right time for God to do something. And I need us to move all together. If that's you, I dare you to grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, we got the bus to move. Neighbor, I can feel things starting to happen in your life. There's no wonder you sat next to me because God is on me. The favor of God is on my life. Is there any ballers in here? Is there any millionaires in here? Is there any doctors in here? Is there any lawyers in here? It's say yeah. Well, let me ask you one question. Is there any blessed folk in the house? Is there anybody that he saved you? Is there anybody that he rocked you to sleep at night? Is there anybody he regulated your mind? He's a heart fixer, a mind regulator. Do you know him? Somebody ought to say yeah. Have you tried him? Somebody ought to say yeah. Do you know who I'm talking about? Can I talk about him for a minute? He's Moses' burning bush. He's Noah's ark. He's Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's my rose of Sharon. He's my bright and morning star. Do you know him? What's his name? His name is Jesus. Say yeah. He's Mary's baby. He's Moses' rod down by the Red Sea. Yes, he is. He's that lion in the lion's den. He's the fourth man in the fiery furnace. Can I talk about him? Where my young folk at? Can I talk about him? No cap. He's the bright and morning star. No cap. He's Jesus, my savior. Where my young folks say no cap. He saved me. Yes. But one day they hung him high and they stretched him wide. They nailed him, put nails in his hands, nails in his feet, pierced him in the side. He hung there with his head in the locks of his shoulder. He hung there until the moon dipped in blood. He hung there until the earth rocked and reeled. He hung there until the veil ripped in two. He hung there until your sins and my sins. I feel like hollering one time. Yes! hung there until my sins got paid they laid him 
tomb in a borrowed tomb anything you borrow you got to give it back tell somebody you're gonna have to give it back on the third day they closed him up my rock went inside a rock my rock laid on top of a rock my rock was closed up with a rock somebody say on the third day on the third day my rock roll back the rock my rock got up off the rock my rock walked out the rock is that you somebody say yeah say yeah yeah ah! high five three people high five three people say here comes your harvest here comes your harvest your health is on the way. Your job is on the way. Your marriage is about to get better. Say yes. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yes, sir. Five, high five. Three people say it's mine. 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 Here come the change. Here come the breakthrough. Here come the deliverance. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout. 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 Do you feel it? Let me talk to my young folk. Do you feel it? You are unstoppable. Do you feel it? You are unbreakable. Do you feel it? You are undefeated. Do you feel it? The Bible says you are more, more than a conqueror.